espionage, the art that has forever ruled the darkest parts of war. From the ninjas of Japan to the philanthropers like Mr. James Bond, spies will always hold a very special interest for people. Even during the harsh times in World War I, both sides, the good and bad, have had their fair share of spies working to uncover the other's secrets. Today, we shall meet a few of the spies from the losing side. Their faces will be covered to keep their identity protected. My name is Marmaduke Duke. Welcome to Central Power Spies. Our first guest is a man who goes by the name Simon Emile Codell. Let's ask him a few questions about himself so we can try to get inside the mind of a spy. Where are you from? Germany. Who do you work for? Well, since I've been caught already, I suppose it doesn't matter now. I work for the Abwehr. There was supposed to be a counter-espionage agency, but as you can see with me, that was not the case. You were stationed in New York City, is that right? Yes. I played the part of a concerned businessman and shareholder. No one suspected anything. I have testimony from a few friends of yours from New York who were very shocked to find out that you had been caught in the act of espionage working against the Allied powers. Do you have anything you wish to say to them? Don't trust anyone! All right. The next man is far different from a hidden businessman in America. He was a diplomat. Mr. Wasmus, where are you from? I will always be loyal to Mother Germany. But weren't you living in Persia for all those years you were accused of espionage? I only went to Persia to assist my country. From there I could fight off those British dogs so they wouldn't get the resources they needed. Clever plot, my good sir. But as I remember, you made one fatal mistake, is that right? Yes. I was too busy plotting rebellions with the Persian people, and I lost track of a very important book. You lost your copy of the German decoding book and it fell into the wrong hands. After that, my spy career went downhill. I survived the war, but lived in poverty until I finally died. Bum, bum, bum. We have two guests this time. On the right is Mr. Voss, and on the, on the left is Mr. Ernst. They have two things in common. They were both charged with espionage, and both of them say they were falsely charged. That's right. I'm innocent. This is all because I came from Germany. I'm naturalized, though. I'm an American now, and I'd never do anything against my country. I was just a simple worker in an airplane factory when all of a sudden I'm caught up in this dirty spy business. Me too! I'm just sitting in my shop in London giving a lovely lady a trim. I'm a barber, you know. When these policemen busted and took me away, shouting some nonsense about a spy ring, a spy ring in a barber shop? Who has ever heard of anything more preposterous? Or perhaps it was just a very good cover. I don't know if either of you really were spies, but back in those times, you could never be too careful. <laughs> this man, Franz von Papen, was quite the little scoundrel in his time. Not only did he target some of America's most vital railroads, he even tried to blow up an important canal in Canada. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for... Well, the police. They shipped me back to Germany in a week, but it wasn't so bad. I became chancellor for a while. You must not have been a very good spy if you got caught. Zip it. You're talking to Germany's chancellor. Not anymore. Didn't Hitler take that position from you when he showed up? <clears throat> I thought this was just a discussion about World War I. If I had known we'd be discussing that Hitler business, I would not have agreed to this meeting. Fine then. You can leave. This man was probably the most successful spy of them all. Jules C. Silver was never caught, probably never even suspected. He not only survived the war, he lived a peaceful life until the end, even having enough time to write a book about his espionage adventures. He was such a fantastic spy, we couldn't even find him to put him on the show. All we got was this short film, made by Silver himself. Hi there, my name is... Wait a second. Hi there. My name is Jules C. Silber, and I am the spy who is never caught. 
I spent a great deal of my life working in a postal office sending information back home that would be detrimental to the Allies. And who knows, perhaps I'm not the only one. There may be tons of spies that were never caught, that were so good, like me. But hey, they didn't write a book about themselves, did they? Mwa ha 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 I win. Go. Our next guest is a man who was quite proud of being a spy, and perhaps that was what got him caught. Carl, why did you want to become a spy? I wanted to help my country. We were losing and I knew I could help. I was married to an American, so I could travel anywhere I wanted to throughout Europe. Those big deal officers said I was really important. What was your biggest accomplishment as a spy? The telegram I sent that sunk that ship. It was the first ship ever sunk by a torpedo fired underwater, you know? I'm really proud I could help. It's too bad I got caught so soon afterwards. They even named a destroyer after me. You know, the Hans Lodi. I'm really proud. I'm sure you are. Back in the times of World War I, spying was mostly a man's game. But there is one woman who is known especially for her work as an agent. Mrs. Mata Hari, what is your real name and profession? My real name is Margaretha Gertruda Zell McLeod, but I hate that thing. It's long and has no style. I'm a courtesan or an exotic dancer, whichever one you wish. Mata Hari means son in Indonesian. I came up with it myself. I think it's very pretty. What about your husband, Rudolf McLeod? Does he know that you're an exotic dancer? Oh, him? No, I left him years ago. He was an alcoholic and he hit me. Plus, now I can get whatever guy I want. But you sure do like military men, don't you? Well, yeah. But what does that have to do with anything? You used your feminine wiles to get them to reveal information about top secret military rulings, didn't you? I didn't know such thing! Why does everyone think I'm a spy? There's no proof! I'm as innocent as that barber from before. I'm just a girl who likes to have fun. I wasn't a double agent or a spy or anything. I swear to it. I was falsely charged and even killed. Just come someone I thought I was interesting. If a woman used it to her looks to seduce and trap men. I didn't do it, I tell you! <laughs> you can never know. A spy will always lie. That concludes our look into Central Power Spies. Now... Be on the lookout for suspicious individuals. Also, Miss Chevres is really, really short. Really short. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Hey, what up, girl? Grab my glasses, I'm out the door. I'm gonna hit this city. Let's Before go. I leave, brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. Cause when I leave for the night, I ain't coming back. I'm talking pedicure on our toes, toes. Trying on all our clothes, clothes. Boys blowing up. Phones, phones, drop top and playing our favorite CDs, pulling up to the parties, trying to get a little bit tipsy. Don't stop, make it pop, DJ Bones. And here we have the world's most dangerous spy, Aztec, the destroyer. Please, see, he's running away. He's gonna get away from the scene of the crime because he's such a good spy like that. Let's follow him. Where is he going? To the door. Will I let him outside? I don't know. Should I? Yeah, probably because he'll just meow at me if I don't. Oh, 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 just tease. Sorry. No. I'm, I'm there. We're gonna film my shadow. That concludes our look. <laughs> our first guest. Oh, Frederick, did you die in the army? No, I did not. Oh, good. So, how was your army? How did your army career look like? Why are you laughing? <laughs> I was 
<laughs> just keep going, just go, just go. All right. What makes you a hero, Mr. Frederick Holmes? I think of myself as a hero because I'm very determined. In what ways? Um, I'm very determined because I will not give up. I fought through this war and I stayed with it even when I had anger. Wow, that does sound like a very determined hero. I think you've earned your place under the war heroes of the world of World War One. What kind of uh, injuries are you talking about? Well, during the fight at the Cateau, I helped save a man. And during this, I have save a man. <laughs> okay, go, go. No, stop it! Stop it! I'm Espionage. <laughs> Coach. Hey, Harmony. <laughs> My name is Marmaduke Duke. Excuse me, Miss Camera Lady. I am not a camera lady. I'm also a man. She's a camera. Okay, you guys did good, but now I'm gonna have to edit myself in. Guys, good day. But you sure do like military, man.